So when you call 911, you expect help as soon as possible. But will that help always arrive in time? Tonight, our Dustin Grove explains why many of our small towns in our state are now sounding the alarm for firefighters and funding. Near historic Nashville, Indiana, an artist's colony and tourist town where time stands still, Mike Morris's mission is to beat the clock. As I was typing your response, we got a call. We're on the way to a medical emergency. He's a firefighting veteran. Ready? Yep. I'm old. I'm 71 years old. So, you know, I shouldn't be doing this. He's still volunteering, he says, because too few others are. But I'm the only one available during the day. Morris is chief of the Southern Brown County Volunteer Fire Department. A lot of times one guy will roll on a truck. That is not the way it should be. To cover half the county, it's rural, but it includes half of the massive Brown County State Park, one of Indiana's most popular spots to hike, bike, and camp. If you get hurt down here, I, geez, I really hope you get hurt on a weekend. When we've got a lot of guys that can respond. Like all volunteer fire departments, finding people willing to fill these boots, to get trained and certified, and then respond to emergency calls day and night, well, it's tougher than ever. I think because everybody's so busy, it's harder. Nationwide since the 1980s, the number of calls for help has tripled, while the number of volunteers has dwindled, recently reaching historic lows. The National Fire Protection Association says it's largely due to increased time demands, tougher training requirements, and an increase in the number of two-income families whose members simply don't have time to volunteer. Larry Curl is with the Indiana Volunteer Firefighters Association. In today's society, we got so many things going on, and to give back to that community spirit of providing a service for free is tough to get to. Here's why this is so important. When you call for help, chances are a volunteer will respond. That's because here in Indiana, most communities are served by volunteer fire departments. Not only hurting for volunteers right now, but money too. This is expired, yeah. Some volunteers are wearing expired gear or no gear at all. When I came on the department, I had three guys that show up at a fire didn't even have boots to wear. They'd be in their work tennis shoes. Help did come this year when lawmakers approved $10 million in first-of-its-kind grant money to buy life-saving equipment for the 66 poorest fire departments across the state and those with the oldest equipment. For Morris's crew, that meant more than a dozen air masks, helmets, and boots. That seems like something everybody just should have. Everybody should have. A lot of people don't have. And more help came this summer when the state announced plans to add 15 regional training centers across Indiana to make it more convenient to be a volunteer. With the additional locations, advocates say most people won't have to drive more than 40 minutes from home. What? The hope now is for more men and women to be as motivated as Mike Morris to wear these boots so he can someday retire his. I enjoy helping people. and. Uh to see what this good this department can do in this community is very heartwarming, very rewarding, and uh, it's worthwhile. In Brown County, Dustin Grove, 13 News.